And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. It is Friday, February the 10th, 2023. Off to another start and another week has blown by here in one of the shortest uh, months out there of 2023. Probably the shortest month with only 28 days in it. And uh, got a birthday coming up. I had to realize that. February 23rd is my birthday. So we get a chance to kind of move on with this uh, country radio seminar. We're going to partake in our third year in a row coming up in Nashville, Tennessee, March 13 to 15. Uh, presented by our friends over at Bangtail Whiskey. You know we like to drink here on the show. Bangtail.com, or you can check out Easy Liquor, also Total Wine and Specs in Nashville area and also in Florida. Uh, go in there if they don't have it, demand it, because it's a great, great, uh, great whiskey. I love drinking it. 90 proof, and also our friends at Gentle Bend Spirits, the vodka, the gin, and the bourbon. Fantastic out there, too. You guys can check them out at uh, GentleBend.com, also in the Houston market down here, uh, Total Wine and Specs, and our friends at Honky Tonk. Texas, all presenting sponsors, and I was actually doing a schedule today. Uh, just some of the names that will be there coming up. Uh, Mackenzie Phipps, The Band Exile, Ali Colleen, Ryan Griffin, McBride and the Ride, uh, Shane Owens, Ty Herndon, T. Graham Brown. We're going to have a lot of fun there. March 13 to 15 in Nashville, Tennessee, coming up there at Country Radio Seminar. Pleased to welcome in my featured artist of today, and I love doing this quarter box here. I guess you could say corner boxes. Uh, because I've not had a show like this before. Uh, they're in Canada, and their new single is Kill It out there across all the digital platforms and on Spotify called Work of Heart. And it is uh, Brittany, Bobby, and Kyla, known as The Heels, joining us here on the Backstage Pass. Ladies, how we doing? Great. Yeah. Thanks for having Great. us. I, I'm enjoying it. And like I said, I first heard that single, and I said, we've got to do a show with the heels, no doubt about it too. Well, I guess let me start there uh, with you, Kyla, just kind of talk about how this arrangement came together. I guess the love of music. Um, and when you guys formed this group and you, you very kind of knew you had something special there early on, right? Yeah, we did pretty much the first time we sang together. We mm. met at my cafe in North Vancouver. Brittany was a barista. Bobby was a customer clicking her heels every time she came in and uh so that's that's how it all happened we met there we started singing together to heal ourselves from you know different life situations good and bad mm -hmm. and eventually we came up with our first album and then now our second and we're on to our third and it just gets better and better every single day <laughs> well talk about that uh, the great acknowledgement there too and also just the recognition from spotify that this single has done so well uh since it came out bobby this has been a very special time uh, for you guys staying busy. And I know it's going to lead to more great projects here in, in 2023, but this single has had a great response from country music fans all over. Yeah, it's been really heartwarming for us. It's always kind of a risk as indie artists to release a ballad. And this was just something that's really important to us, the message behind it. And we just felt like the world needed it right now. So it's really nice to see it so well received. Yeah, and I know you guys have worked with a lot of great people. Uh, Anthony Fiddler on there, too, uh, has produced. Uh, he's also a BCCMA award winner out there, too. So talk about this. And I know the next step of this, Brittany, is, is I'm, I'm, sure, I'm assuming there's an EP coming up uh, very shortly this year after this single, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, sometime later this year. Um, yeah, we've been working with Anthony since the beginning as well, Um He's now my husband and okay. a little baby. So it's like Congratulations. a deal of uh, you know, music brings us all together. So it's really what's brought so much love into our band in lots of different ways. So, um, yeah. Was it a little boy, little girl? Girl. Little girl. Okay. See, we all have little girls just taking over too. I just had yeah. one of those <laughs> a couple of years ago too. And like I said, just little girls taking over. My brother and I did not have one boy in our family when it came down to it, it was all girls. That's just the way wow. at least they're happy, healthy. And that's a good part of it too. Uh, you know, I always talk about this because I know musicians never rest on their laurels. So talk about just some goals and, and, and some aspirations, things that you guys have for kind of new year's resolutions, I guess, individually, Kyla, we'll go back to you on this. I know you guys want to expand out. We mentioned the EP and then also probably personal goals as a, as a, as a trio, just talk about that, those, uh, those side of things when it comes to new year's resolutions and some goals you guys have as, as a band this year. We, I feel like it's endless every day. Something's new. <laughs> we have lists. We have like, <laughs> yeah, Google Docs is very handy. It just, mm -hmm. you know, we can, we can edit all at the same time in, in live. So we're like, we're, we're list lovers. <laughs> list lovers. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Bobby, you want to kind of expand on that a little bit as far as, I mean, the yeah. list against itself. Yeah. 
I'd say, um, you know, keep releasing music that we write. We love collaborating with different writers. So we're always looking for uh, new writers that inspire us to work with. And we do a lot of trips back and forth to Nashville, which we definitely want to keep doing this year. And uh, we've got the new album coming out. And we're just looking to really export our band and our sound to new places we've never been. So we have a tour coming up in Texas. And um, we're hoping to get over to the UK and just really expand our reach and our message to the whole world. I love that. And Brittany, that's pretty cool. You're coming down to my neck of the woods. So definitely I've got to get out there and see you guys now and just bring my drinks when I do that because uh, whiskey sponsored and gin and bourbon and all this good stuff and vodka here. So we just bring our own bottles and then that way I get you guys. Uh, what part of Texas do you guys know yet? Or is it still kind of in the works as far as Texas goes? It's in the works. Yeah, okay. we, All right. so yeah I'll we've got to... a couple like tentative dates and stuff, but yeah, All it's right. in the works right now. We're working with an agent down in uh, in uh, Texas right now. So I like that. So I'm going to have to come out there and uh, <laughs> like I said, bring my own drinks. And if you guys are close, <laughs> I'll have to come see you down here, especially, especially yeah. my neck of the woods. Let's break down um, work of heart. Kyle, I'm going to go back to you on this a little bit too. Uh, song idea, kind of backstory. I know every song has a good story to, to kind of put together. Where did the, this one kind of start? And Talk about the writing process going through it. Yeah, for sure. So we, during COVID, we had plans to tour, of course, through North America and everything stopped for mm -hmm. most people as it did for us. So instead of being sad about it, we turned around the truck and we headed for the mountains where Bobby is located. And we went and pretty much for a week and we decided to turn something negative into a positive which is what our band is always about even if it's mm -hmm. not negative we'll still make it positive <laughs> and we decided to continue writing we already had booked some co-writes and Megan Bark was actually one of those co-writes and that's who we wrote Work of Heart with with Anthony Fiddler of course and so that's the beginning of Work of Heart. Go back to your uh, album you guys have put out there in uh, 2021. I, I enjoyed listening to it. Uh, Hush Money was one of my favorite ones off of there, off the I Am album. She's shaking her up. <laughs> right Bobby. She knows I'm coming to her. Uh, I guess a favorite song because you're shaking right there too. And uh, had to be fun to to perform, I guess, even before uh, that pandemic you know, hit us there. But tell us all about and kind of hit on some of the highlights, Bobby, of, of the album I Am. Yeah, I Am was uh, an album that just kept growing. We had all this time to record, so it ended up being 16 songs. Mm -hmm. We titled it after a musical meditation track, which is the last one on the album. But the singles like Catch and Release, we got to duet with Aaron Perchette, who's a big country superstar up here in Canada. That one was our first charting single in Canada. And then Hush Money did so well on TikTok that it ended up blowing up on the iTunes charts. And we had a number one in France, a number six in... Um, I can't even Belgium. remember all the different places, but there's the UK, Belgium, mm -hmm. um, France, and there was just all these chart topping numbers that we'd never seen before. And it was really cool to have such a big reach with that song. And I think it's just something that's really sassy and sexy to sing. And so people just love emulating it and their TikToks. And yeah, so it was a, a really cool album because it has a really big mix. Like, like you said, you listen to it and it's got kind of everything from true, like rooted country traditional sounds to like rock and then also the spirituality at the end. So yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah, and I know collaboration becomes so huge in this, the, you know, the right team behind you, and of course, the production that goes into it, uh, the final kind of mix and mastering of this album. I thought it came out really, really well, uh, sounded one of the best country albums I've heard, man, from start to finish on there, too. Got a chance to listen to oh. all 16 songs on there, too. So I guess tell me a little bit, Brittany, on uh, High Heels On, and we'll start there, and then I was going to go down to Fixer Upper. That was kind of my next two points from it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want me to talk about both of them? Sure, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> High Heels On is, is one of my favorites still that we've ever written. It's It came from very like personal. It came from a personal point, which we then brought to like a universal message of just standing up for yourself and taking um, abuse really in whatever way that is um, to each person and, and using that um, as kind of a, a strength to stand up to and not run anymore. Um yeah, so I think it's really powerful, and it's, like, one of my favorites, so. Um, it, it, it stood out to me on the record, too. And then I guess I'll throw it over to Kyla. Talk to me about uh, the uh, Fixer Upper, which I kind of love that title of it, too. It was song number seven there on uh, the record, which was really cool. And I actually I got a chance to break down a lot of these and really just enjoy great country music and 
uh, 90s country feel. You guys have brought back a little bit yeah. and uh, really a lot of that <laughs> 90s country feel. I'm not going to say a little bit there. but uh, uh, And again, I don't like to make comparisons from artist to artist, but you guys have your own unique sound and, and you, you don't sound like anybody else. That's what's so good about this album. Walk me through oh. Uh, fixer upper, which I, I mean, I really feel like that. I'm being honest with you. On the you team. are the best. I'm <laughs> like, trying to be. We need, we I'm honest. I'm a, we're going to write all these down for testimonies. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. I give I a lot of testimony it. here on the show. Go for oh, it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, fixer upper, I don't know. To me, I love singing fixer upper. It just like, it. it's so powerful and sexy. And that's pretty much what we like to emulate on stage but also like inspire people so i find with that one it's just like when when we're live and performing that this character just comes out and i just like i'll look over at bobby and Brittany, and we're like all right in it and sad <laughs> kind of like hush money it happens yeah. in hush money too uh yeah fix rapper is such a fun song to, to sing and then also to tiktok we mm -hmm. we have so many tiktok videos of fixer upper being used for old trailers and houses and actually i'm renovating a house right now so i'm like i might as well use our own song while i'm renovating here very handy it's a really fun song though I love, yeah, that's what i was telling some people there too or remodeling a house or something that's kind of what or anything a boat a car yeah make it just the next uh, fixer upper a man <laughs> That's that's what it's inspired that's about. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to take a look, my own look, reflection, self reflection in the mirror too. There too. Because uh, get some new was, shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You Haircut. Know. Make sure it's all good. You know. But exactly. I'm like, uh, you know, it it really was uh, just a fun song to hear. Just bringing back some Thank great country you. music on on that album too. We got to take a, a quick time out. We still got a lot of songs to talk about here too, and of course, rapid fire here on the show. We're going to go through each individual of the heels here on the backstage pass again thanks mm -hmm. to our sponsors out there bangtail whiskey check them out bangtail.com or easyliquor.com you guys can go get a bottle sent directly to your door if you're shopping online out there too or if you're in the nashville area uh, total wine and specs and of course we'll be there march 13 to 15 at the omni hotel broadcasting live uh, country radio seminar be there in the entire week and enjoy that two and a half day event we facebook aliving everything this year so you guys can check out uh, some of the great artists we have buddy jewel mcbride and the ride and a whole lot more hanging out with us, possibly some other surprises walking through that curtain back there, too. Quick time out here, a word from our sponsors. It is the Backstage Pass coming back. More with the heels here on the show. Hang tight. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... If you like to drink, that's what it's all about right there. Removing the impurities from your drink, making it a refined experience. Uh, the Persado process, the technology, the science behind it, it's amazing. I've had the gin, the vodka, the bourbon. They even have their cask strength bourbon now available in the Houston market. Total wine and specs. 
and just expanding out there to our friends at Gentle Bend Spirits out there. Ricky Ford, Aggie graduate class of 1985. And they're also in with the Houston Rockets. They've got their own bar, Section 225, inside the Toyota Center, too, if you're going to an NBA game. Uh, check out Gentle Bend Spirits. And, of course, at the Astros games at Minute Maid Park, we'll be there uh, March 30th, 31st, somewhere in there, at the opening day with the Houston Astros and the Chicago White Sox. And back here, presented by our friends over at Bangtail Whiskey and Honky Tonk Texas. The Heels joining us here, Brittany, Bobby, and Kyla. We're talking about everything. Uh, from the single to the records to everything else there, too, here on the uh, podcast here today. I want to go back to the album uh, I Am, too. Uh, Kyla, we'll start here with this one. Uh, symptoms. I, I kind of felt something, too, when I heard that one. We've all got symptoms, no doubt, when it comes down to, uh, like I said, what we're listening to. Great country music out there. Again, everything we're talking about today, guys, is, is available for streaming across all the digital platforms out there, wherever you download or stream music. Let's start with Symptoms, Kyla, and kind of the backstory of that one. Symptoms we wrote with Megan Barker, who we also wrote with, mm -hmm. Work of Heart. She's one of our favorite writers in Nashville. She's so down to earth. She's an incredible artist herself, so look her up for sure. We wrote this one inspired to write something positive because our first album was a little bit angry at our exes. <laughs> so we were thinking, <laughs> well, maybe we should lighten things up a little bit. Maybe things... <laughs> Maybe we should be less scary. <laughs> so, well, at least me. I tend to be a little bit extra with everything. So, like, when I'm scary, I mean, I'm really scary. So, <laughs> Symptoms is a little love song and quite light and mm -hmm. airy. So, it's a nice adjustment from all the other songs on the album. We thought it was a nice balance. It, it did. Yeah, it had a good balance. It did. And I was going to lead me into my next question as I kind of go down there, too, with, with that one. Uh, Fool's Gold. Uh, Bobby, talk about that one for me. Yeah, that one is just sort of a song about recognizing somebody that you've sort of you've, you've met that person before, like these patterns that we repeat in life and you can learn from them and kind of realize right away that somebody's going to be an ex-boyfriend if you even went there or an ex-girlfriend. So, yeah, that's kind of Fool's Gold. Let you go be some other Fool's Gold. I like that, which is great. And I'm going to go back a little bit, even more old school. You mentioned that first album because Kyla kind of struck a chord with me uh, there when she said this too, from Love Heals, which was that first album y'all put out in, in 2018. Brittany, I'm, I'm going to see if you can guess which one I'm going to talk about here and or ask you about from that first album. Are you going to talk about X-Rated? I was going to go X-Rated. There you go. She got it right. So that's good one. <laughs> just because I love the title. So that's <laughs> much as we can uh, talk about that one, but it is X-Rated. Yes. Oh, I love that one too. You keep giving me the songs that I love the Good. most. Um, <laughs> that one is so much fun as well. Um, so it's EX rated. Uh -huh. um, so it's tricky there. So it's it's pretty much, it's like a, a harder, mm -hmm. rockier version of Fool's Gold where it's like, you can see someone enter a room and before you even get to know them, you just know that that could be a future X. So you're just not even going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great title for, for, for a song, too. Also, off of there, I loved the last one. Uh, this was fun, Kyla. Country Girls Don't Play That Way. I thought that was another cool, uh, <laughs> which is a trick. Did. And a great <laughs> message sent there. Great vibe I got to feel with that one, right? Oh, yeah. That's a big song. We normally end our set with that one just because the ending is just like, pow, like so yeah. stick it to you. <laughs> so. Yeah, you might as well listen to that, the last song. You might as well. <laughs> yeah. Which is, that one's uh, about games as well, like playing. Yeah. Say it again, Brittany, what did you say? Oh, that, the, the play that way is like uh -huh. we referenced games too, so it's tricky also. <laughs> it is one of those songs she kind of hit it when she said pow out there too that was kind of the big the big deal i got from it too no doubt about it um again that singles out there across all the uh, digital platforms for you guys to check out out there uh called work of heart which is uh, available out there across all the digital uh, platforms i want to go here with this one bobby because I, I love bringing this up as far as the uh i mentioned you guys don't sound like anybody else and i'm willing to give whatever testimony I need to give here on the show because again, the music is that good. I've had some great, uh, you know, groups come on here too, but you guys are very unique in the sound you have and the type of style of country music that you put out there. Is that kind of indicative of growing up with listening to, I'm going to throw some groups out there or maybe other bands or solo artists, but give me yours, Bobby, as you grow up, who were kind of some of the musical influences? Yeah, I always loved uh, Reba. She was, Reba and Tanya Tucker were kind of the big females. Michelle Wright when I was really young. And uh, and then Shania Twain, for sure. The Dixie Chicks. I feel like we all come from 
different musical backgrounds, but someone that we all really loved growing up was Shania Twain. And she continues to reinvent herself. And she always has these sort of bold and colorful ways in her writing. So that really inspires us as well as her live show. It's so energetic and she's just a really strong female and she's always sort of made different bold moves in the industry with her look, with what she's saying. And so it's someone that we really admire. Well, Brittany, for you, who would you say kind of some of the same ones? Anybody different? Yeah, so obviously definitely Shania, but I also really loved pop stars. Like that was like Britney Spears which had just come out when I was like seven or eight or nine or something. Mm -hmm. So I, she was like my idol. Um, and Christina Aguilera, there were like lots of girl bands like Dream, Destiny's Child. There was like a, a few of them that I just loved too. Um, and I loved dancing. I grew up dancing um, my like childhood into my teenage years. So anything that was like exciting, yeah. Mm -hmm pop stars were my thing back in the day and then I turned and then I transitioned in my teenage years into, into more like current country mm -hmm. artists so I always tell people too for me it was like going through that high school days and getting into early college and it was like the 90s country and it went to a little bit of rock and I'd gone back and forth but I'd always stay true to to those 90s uh, country artists which are, you guys music reminds me so much of Kyla who did it for you Oh, who hasn't done it for me? <laughs> uh, Whitney Houston, okay. Celine Dion, Michael Jackson, um, Shania Twain, of course. I, I learned how to harmonize to her because I just would do it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, she was probably the most influential growing up and made me want to play guitar. I would say those three. Jessie J is awesome. She's, Yeah. Some some icons there you're talking about right there. Yes, who hasn't done it? <laughs> Which is a great question there that you had here. Hey, talk about the, the challenges a little bit. And you guys can kind of go around a little bit. Uh, Brittany, I'll come back to you on this one. Uh, the challenges of being, I know, female artists in, you know, what once was and I guess still is even today, although we're seeing more female artists and more female groups break through now. But some of the challenges you guys face individually before, I guess, coming together and even coming together now as a group, some of those challenges out there as female country artists. Brittany. Brittany. Yeah, Brittany. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah. go ahead. Oh, oh, I thought it was Bobby. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um, I, I mean, there's like obvious ones for females, I guess, but we are so, uh, I feel like we're quite outside of the box, especially um, as a, as a band, like as a three of us, we all have our different angles of um, like who we are in the band um, and personally, but definitely having a baby is is huge and that's like a huge limiting belief I've put for myself since I was like a teenager um I always felt like um especially because I looked up to people like Britney Spears who was like 15 same with Taylor Swift loved them um but I thought I had to be like established by the time I was like 15 <laughs> so once I got past that age I kept thinking like oh no oh no it's getting too late I can't I can't do it anymore. It was really depressing. Um, but then one day I just was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. And if I'm just doing it, then, then I'm doing it at whatever level that looks like it's, you're still doing what you love to do and no one can take that away from you. So, um, that was when the mindset started to shift. I'm still working on it, especially with having a baby. Now it's more challenging, but it's definitely not impossible. And we have so much fun on the road with her. So. I know all the ins and outs of being a dad, just the challenges that come with it. But I'll tell you this, uh, you're tired half the time. And yeah, it does get in the way of the <laughs> career side of things. And there's times you got to turn it off and turn it back on. But at the same time, at the end of it, uh, I'd say even now with the weekend coming around the corner, it's <laughs> very well worth uh, being a dad. It's very rewarding to me to know that you have uh, someone's you know life in your hands and you're able to, I guess, answer her every move. And I can, I can speak on that of being a first time mm -hmm. dad. Mm -hmm. over the last uh, couple of years but it does put a pause on on life in a way but it, i guess it, it changes things <laughs> it, it, it does it does and it makes you more concerned about life in a different perspective and i, I think until uh people individually become a mom or dad you really in, in a sense maybe you do know what it's about but i guess in a way it's kind of hard to say until it actually happens to, to you it's hard and like as an yeah. entrepreneur um you have to have a team of people that encourage you like we encourage each other not just with kids but whatever was going on in your life like we have each other 
support all the time. So as a solo artist, I can imagine why people, I can see how easily it would be to not do it. You know, it, mm -hmm. it makes everything more challenging, but more rewarding. So I'm very grateful. It, it really for, does. Grateful for each other. And it definitely puts it into <laughs> perspective being a first time parent. Uh, Bobby, for you, kind of the same question. There are challenges that, you know, that you guys either as a group or individually before you became a group uh, faced to say, you know what, here's my dream. I'm going to put this on the line. And I've, I've heard artists say, you know, Nashville's a 10 year town, but it's also sometimes 11 to 15 years before you get that first, you know, big break. And, sure. and also kind of being a, a female artist in this business. So what challenges do you feel like you face either, I guess, individually or as a group? I feel like, you know, before we became a group, it can be kind of hard to stay motivated when you have those low points in your career. It's always super motivating when there's a lot of success happening, but then there's kind of those quiet times in between releases or in between. And we really motivate each other to keep going and to do all the hard work that a lot of people don't see that's behind the scenes. There's a lot of paperwork and we fill out a lot of grants and we're really lucky that we do have support from so many team members now but until you build your team it can be kind of lonely as a solo artist so we became a unit and became each other's team right away and I found the difference of that in uh, just the, the way that you can stay positive and keep going through the hard times is so much easier in a group um, and then I would say like for women our challenge I think it's kind of changing, but I think for a lot of years, there was this sort of standard of women and their image and how they had to present themselves in terms of, you know, how they performed on stage or what they wore, or how they looked. And that can really take over your mind, I think, as a young woman. And uh, as you grow up and, and sort of come into yourself and learn self-love, it's definitely a lot easier. But I think there's a lot of pressures for women that maybe men don't feel the same way, mm -hmm. um, only because I just think there's you know, women get compared to each other a lot, whereas you don't really see those magazines of who wore it better, who wore the, the baseball hat better, this man or this man, <laughs> but you definitely do with women, you know, and I just think that we're, we're really changing that now. I think the, that this society as a whole is really starting to just focus more on love and acceptance and celebrating people's uniqueness, whereas we sort of had an image that we thought was the celebrity image for women before. So, yeah, that's no, what I would great say. Answer. Uh, you know, and I'll say this, and, and like I said, streaming has changed it so much that you guys mentioned TikTok and how it took off and Instagram and all these social media uh, things such as Spotify and SoundCloud and all this, Kyla, to pick up a song such as a, a work of heart and have it out there and to join a playlist and then, you know, to get that on uh, something like uh, uh, the Sirius XM uh, uh, highway, Sirius XM the highway to, to hear a song like that and to advance that into all this technological state of mind now uh, – it's so viral because, and I've had people even say it with this show here, somebody can be listening in England or over in, in Europe or something like that, or even different continent of the side of the world. So it's pretty cool to, I guess, walk through those challenges, Kyla, but at the same time, put your music in so many of the different country music fans or just fans in, in music of general out there to let them hear your sound. That's the beauty of what streaming has done today, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think it's the unity. If if you use it properly and use it as a tool and don't don't take things personally, I think that's been the biggest challenge is some some of the comments you'll see and you're like, "Oh, I'm absolutely crushed that they said this about my pants." And then you're like, "Well, does it really matter on the the grand scheme of things? No, it doesn't really." I mean, Bobby always reminds us like, "A comment's a comment. Keep it up there." So <laughs> Yeah. some of the comments were like oh wow that's a good one <laughs> so you know what the whole thing comes down to not taking things personally mm -hmm. and like bobby said to self-love and and just knowing who you really are as a person and and holding holding true to that and uh yeah my biggest challenge aside from all that is learning how to walk in heels because, um <laughs> I'm not as good as Bobby and Brittany, so I'm still learning. I have a little kitten hills right now. So that's my biggest challenge, though. <laughs> well, hey, you, you admitted it right here on the show. Nothing wrong with that, too. You will get there. As I always say, sports practice makes perfect, and you will just keep going. I'm going to go over to my YouTube channel. Uh, Bill had a comment here. He said, uh, would love to hear how Factor Canada uh, figured in producing your audio and video work, which there was something similar in the U.S. So that's another well, Bill, thanks for the uh, the comment there, too. And anybody, you guys can grab that one if you want to. 
Yeah, no, we're really grateful that there's so many um, government organizations between Factor Canada, uh, the Canada Council Grant is what supported our last album, Creative BC supported our first album. So we've been really lucky to have that support because as an indie artist, it can be really challenging to try to make content that will compete with the artists that you're looking to leverage yourself and compete with when they have major label backings. So Mm -hmm. I know I've heard from our U.S. friends that there isn't anything like that. So Mm -hmm. we're very grateful that that it is here in Canada. I'm not sure where a U.S. artist would look, but I know that there is sort of... um, it's called export grants. So if U.S. artists are looking to create within Canada, they can reach out to Canadian producers like Anthony Fiddler and they can collaborate and use grants in that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that good stuff. Um, I was going to go over to, yeah, David, this is speaking of watching around the world here, England. Uh, yeah, Cumbria, England there too. Um, yeah, great question there. I always love to ask that too. He, he, a lot of times some artists will come on and sing for us and have the guitar. They'll talk about a personal story with that guitar. Um as far as instruments go, uh, that'd be great. I like that question. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Brittany, Brittany plays the guitar. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, she's really good at that. And then I play the guitar, but I don't really like to because I like to have nails. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm learning the drums, you know, because you can still have nails. Mm-hmm. And then Bobby, Bobby, uh, she she. I really play... Harmonica. Yeah, I know, but I wouldn't have the tambo. I, I, yeah, you know, piano as well. I, I grew up taking piano lessons. I don't do any of it on stage. Sometimes I've done harmonica, tambourine, things like that on stage, but more in the way of like showmanship than musicianship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we do like to make our show entertaining and keep switching it yeah. up between um, yeah. songs. We have like these big tom drums that we play for a couple songs. So we like to bring those out and make it like a big show. And people seem mm-hmm. to love that. It's really fun to play too. Yeah, so we, we all play the drums. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one drum each. <laughs> I like that. My buddy Heath tuning in. He always says, "Yeah, he just heard uh, take the trailer." Okay, definitely going far. He loves that one too. At the same time, so let's uh, dive into that one because that was a question I did have, but he took the words out of my mouth. Take the trailer, Bobby. Let's talk about that one. That one was a super fun video and song. It's uh, all about just kind of chasing joy, no matter what it looks like. There's a lot of different checklists that people will put forth in life and make you think that you need to have in order to find happiness. But ultimately, if those things aren't making you happy, then you got to follow your own path to happiness. So that's really what Take the Trailer is about. You know, you take the house, I'll take the trailer. (laughs) And uh, yeah, we had a great time making a video with a few different of our industry friends, our producers in the video, our co-writers in the video, uh, guitar player. So it was just these three unhappy housewives that decide to steal a neighbor's trailer and run away from their lives and their husbands. (laughs) (laughs) It's another great song there. Hey, thanks for bringing it up. Appreciate that too. We're going to come back after the next uh, time out here. We'll put the uh, finishing touches on the show. I want to ask the ladies you know, rapid fire questions. We'll get into them. You guys know the drill here on the uh, backstage pass. We'll ask them everything about uh, anything binge watching shows, favorite foods, favorite drinks, um, title of the first song they wrote. Just give them something to think about there too, if that comes out. You never know what's going to come out of rapid fire here. Uh, coming up here, sponsored by our friends over at uh, Banktail Whiskey, our friends at Gentle Bend Spirits and Honky Tonk Texas. Again, countdown to Country Radio Seminar, March 13 to 15 in Nashville, Tennessee. We'll be broadcasting our show live from the Omni Hotel with an amazing cast of guests. And it just seems like everybody, somebody gets added to it every uh, single day. I can tell you right now, Buddy Jewel, McBride and the Ride, and a whole lot more will be joining us there. Shannon Doa at the Omni, too, will be there with us uh, March 13 to 15 in beautiful Nashville, Tennessee. Coming back with the heels here on the backstage pass after a word from our sponsors, hang tight. The bang tail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. 
And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. So it gets down the Presedo Spirits, our friends at Gentle Bend Spirits in the Houston market down here to uh, Alvin, Texas, the distillery. Of course, removing all the impurities from the drink, creating a refined experience out there. Vodka, gin, bourbon, the cask strength bourbon is out there. Total wine and specs in the Houston market. Also, Bangtail Whiskey and our friends at Honky Tonk, Texas, uh, presenting sponsors of CRS 2023, March 13 to 15 at the Omni Hotel in Nashville, Tennessee. Back here with the heels, uh, Kyla, Bobby, and Brittany, fantastic Canadian Trio country artists, you guys can check them out, theheelsmusic.com for more information, tour dates, things like that, merchandise, and of course, go get the current single work of heart across all the uh, digital platforms. I did want to ask you about this before I get into Rapid Fire because I did enjoy this one in listening to uh, the collection of songs that were out there. Brittany, I'll come back to you with this one. Oh, Canada, which I thought you guys put your uh, very beautiful flavor on at the same time. I love the album uh, artwork cover, the single cover that was out there too. Let's uh, dive into Oh, Canada a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's our national anthem. <laughs> and <laughs> we, we love to perform it live. It's actually really fun to, to sing live because it's all acapella. Um, it was a really unique sound for us. We um, have a vocal coach we work with on numerous songs. Um, she also worked with us on Work of Heart, our, our latest single. And so she really helps us like find these really unique um, blends of harmonies. Um, yeah, and we've performed it at like different rodeos um in arenas for like hockey games and um uh canada days mm-hmm. here and there yeah it's a lot of fun bobby actually made the graphic that you're talking about Beautiful graphic. <laughs> it is very, i like that too like i said that was nice because I, I do look at those art covers when it comes to singles and sometimes uh full-length albums too so you did a great job with that uh, no doubt which is uh really kind of stuck out to me when i was looking at that too and it's always i love it too because i've been up there i always say can american even though i'm kind of the same thing too and i know kyle you had a, a speaking of that too you had another kind of expression out there too because i said half canadian half american what was that expression you were telling me before the show what was it you american 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 i'm like a goldfish i say things and it's gone it's got goldfish Americanada. Americanada. <laughs> Americanada. i like that too. <laughs> which is great bobby that view in the sure. background Wherever you're at, my guys, <laughs> blowing my mind because people have never traveled up there. It is a beautiful because I thought my phone was going to die, but yeah, it's it's all snowy. Oh man, it's just beautiful. Like the snow caps up there too. I love the mountains going up through there. Went there in like 2017. Got to go up through Yellowstone National Park and then get up there through the Rockies. Jasper National Park was so beautiful okay. up there when I got to go to the west side of, of Canada and, and kind of do a little camp out. So it was uh, awesome. nice. Spent two weeks there in the summertime and trust me, it beat the Texas heat down here a hundred times over. I would I would do it again. <laughs> Every year, no doubt about it, too. Uh, Bill had a comment, too. The ladies also be here in Nashville mid-March. I'd love to hear them play the big room at the City Winery or Brooklyn Bowl. I do not know. Great question there. Like I said, things are coming together because of, of that being a country radio seminar when we're there. Any rumors? I guess you guys can speak to that. Anything that there's planning on, on playing something in, in Nashville for CRS? That's a good question. Yeah, we're still to. we're still planning and and you know working things out. But if there's anybody that wants to book us, Sakamoto is our agency, and to contact them because they are super pro and they do all of that for us, which is so handy. I love it too. <laughs> Brooklyn Bowl is a great spot too. If you want to come to play out there too, we got to see it. Dustin Lynch and a whole yeah. bunch of other. Uh, great artists who were there last year, one of our after hour functions that we went to turn uh, CRS after we finished all the media days are exhausting. I tell people when you're doing 10 to 15 interviews a day, but the uh, the party begins after five o'clock there in Tennessee when you find your nearest bar and your, and your great artists. So if you've never been to CRS, you'll need to get down there and experience a week of fun there 
in uh, in Music City too. All right, time for some fun questions here, Brittany. I'm gonna start with you today, just because we're feeling good here on a Friday. Our favorite uh, favorite food. And favorite beverage when you're having one of those cravings? Oh, I love uh, margaritas and like, well, that goes well with Mexican food. So let's yes, say like tacos and margaritas. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Bobby, for you, what is it? Uh, yeah. I mean, we, usually I order the same thing as Brittany. <laughs> I can never make a choice. So I go, what are you having? Okay, I'll have that. <laughs> Fair. We share. Usually we share. Sure. <laughs> Kyla, same, same sentiment. Thing. Well, no, some, I get bored easy, so I like to try new things all the time. I, and then I always, like, look at what they're eating. I'm like, oh, I wish I ordered that. <laughs> so <laughs> and it, We do yeah. go for margaritas and tacos a lot. We that do. was, like, our staple in Nashville. It's true. Hitting up all the different margarita and taco Mamacita. Places. Oh, mamacita. Yes. Bar Is taco a was amazing. Which one? Bar taco. Yeah. And taco yeah. mamacita. Taco which mamacita. Yes. But they reopen. There's a new location. We gotta Ooh. go. <laughs> Taco Mamacita, and uh, I, I've got to try these. So, like I said, if somebody's yes. out there, Bar remember, because I'm like Kyla, yeah. I will forget the minute I get off the air some of the restaurant <laughs> names. Trust me. Say one time, and you just so much stuff <laughs> to put together this event and make sure it goes off without any mistakes. That you know, the last thing I'm thinking about is restaurants. But I will take any recommendations y'all have because I didn't get to experience like the hot chicken when I was there last year, and some of the taco <laughs> bars slash margaritas too. So. Um, and I don't, I'm not afraid be to admit it. Be careful I mean, with the hot chicken. Be careful. So, yeah. where did y'all? My husband, my husband ate it twice in one day, and he couldn't even sit down the next day. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hot. They're not lying. It's, they're, well, they're, they're, that's, why, that's why I got to get it mild sometimes too. Yeah. When it comes, to, it can't get extra hot or whatever the sauce they put on it too. They they put one of the restaurants down here in Texas where I'm at, I say put, I mean, franchised out, whatever, Nashville hot chicken, but it's not the same as, as uh, trying it. It's not the same as, as what you can get up there in, in music city. All right, Kyle, I'm gonna come back to the, the quad box here too. Um, I started the top right corner. Uh, last show to binge watch. What was it? Oh, you know what? I watched the Dean Dillon documentary. I watched it a couple times. I just love him so much. I've not seen it. Check he, that out yeah. Too. He's he's the man behind Tennessee whiskey. Okay. Yeah, I do. Yes. And that's always, and love just either rock docs or just documentaries or just country docs. So that's what that's, that's pretty much all I watch. And then sometimes when the girls are with me and we get together and we drink things, we sometimes <laughs> watch <laughs> Love Island. <laughs> we get trashy really, TV. Actually, trashy that, TV. Yeah. yeah. That's our kind of our, you, TV, we, we sure. said we could have like, a, a camera on us while we're watching yeah. because yeah. We're going, our we'll reactions. We'll go we're live. So we'll show you. He did what? He did that. Yeah. <laughs> I know for me, it was far good. It was, uh, I just got into this. They're releasing them every week now on Sundays. Uh, the uh, one with Brian Cranston, who was in Breaking Bad, and it was called Your Honor. And it's come on Showtime, and it's a really good series that I really oh. like. He always plays kind of like the bad guy or the cover up guy when he's doing stuff like that. And the second one was, and it's been out there everywhere. HBO Max has put it out there. The Last of Us with the two actors from uh, Game of Thrones. My which husband's is, watching that. Which is really a good uh, a good series now. And they're, they're really good characters and, and playing to a really good uh, storyline. Uh, Brittany, for you, what, what does it consist of? More like you said, any other shows that you've binge watched that you've gotten into lately? I'm pretty boring when it comes to it. I just rewatch Friends all the time or uh, <laughs> Modern good. Family. But Friends is, Friends is my go-to. Actually... I did watch Wednesday. That was really good, really creepy and good. And and uh, this is us. Okay, I like. So that. I can and probably then... count the amount of shows I've watched in the last few years, but <laughs> I get really invested in those few. Hey, the the kiddos have to sleep sometime. Then the adult programming comes on, right? Bobby, for you, what's it been? Um, I watch the like 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 Kyla said documentaries mostly mm -hmm. and then if I do watch shows it's usually guilty pleasure shows um like love is blind that was the one that we all watched together the last time and I was gonna say ladies today today season three comes out I already reserved <laughs> with my husband I'm like this is what I'm watching later so you can go outside and do <laughs> I gotta go update wow love is blind I usually have really intense forward. it is oh I, I, dear I can't believe some of the things that people like do on national tv <laughs> but it's also That's good true. education <laughs> There, there is, yes, there she. 
that's why I say rock docs and country docs or any doc out there when it comes to programming is uh, good stuff. I mean, hell, I was just talking to one of the members of Guns N' Roses the other day. Uh, Richard Fortas came on. He's one of the lead guitar players there. And, uh, you know, you don't bring up anything like that, too. But Guns N' Roses is one of the all-time great rock bands, too. And I still love watching documentaries on stuff like that. It's interesting. It is. Yes. I thought I'm you were going to say he was watching Love Island. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we need to talk. He may have been. I don't know what he said. I have to go back and listen to his interview. I don't know what he said when he said he was uh, watching stuff like that. No, he stays busy with music. That's the next question to lead me into. So, Kyla, what, outside of music, what's your favorite hobby? Uh, well, I'm starting to take drum lessons, but I guess that's considered music. But, you know, technically it's math. It is. So, um, <laughs> I don't really have any other hobbies. I tried crafting and I walked out of the class because I got so bored. <laughs> so I had a refund for my pottery class. So I don't really do anything else other than music, really. All right. Bobby, for you, any other hobbies outside of music? I love cooking and I love gardening. So as okay. much as I love the snow here, I'm really excited yeah. for it to all melt so that I can get back to gardening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brittany, for you, I mean, outside, I guess, being a mom, what's other hobbies outside of music? Yeah, I mean, I... I have lost all my hobbies since being mm -hmm. a mom. They'll come back one day, but I really love like creating things. So like I was doing like macrame for a long time and um, just creating things. I was pressing flowers a lot and like making art from that. Potpourri. Potpourri too. <laughs> um, crafting, crafting. Yeah. I also really enjoy gardening. We have a, a couple here and um, like, like making the yard look nice and everything. Like, especially when it starts getting, um, warmer here mm -hmm. but at the moment uh, i spend all my time with with Paige, my daughter yeah <laughs> i the baby shark yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but and Paige is, is how old now she'll be a year on valentine's day well there you go happy valentine look at that happy valentine's Ooh. day too i've got a birthday party this weekend my brother's youngest is going to be or has turned two we're just doing the birthday and then my his uh, sister-in-law, they had the baby on the same day, so they're going to both both turning two this weekend for a party. Mine will be three in April, so I'm like, we're almost turning that corner of uh, of getting there now to the, the four, five, six, which they say is always a fun age to, to look yeah. forward to. Three, the mental thing, neurons start to spin, and then it becomes, they say, a little bit easier now because the potty training, we're almost to that part of, whew, man, it's, it's getting there too. So if we get no more pull-ups and no more, and of course, I still say, I love and respect people that do daycares out there, but <laughs> what they charge whew, man it's like another mortgage you got to take out too on that too yeah, so it's yeah. uh, <laughs> i gotta keep doing these shows to put good stuff out there too i tell you what i, I love the music it, it is fantastic uh, i love it so much I, i'll give any testimony i can on it too already have on this show but not afraid to say it again too uh work of heart it's out there across all the digital platforms came out last friday so it's been out a week now uh continue getting its streaming numbers up guys spotify soundcloud uh, apple music wherever you hit uh play Keep hitting play. Uh, go out and get the albums, too. Go stream them. Uh, I am and love heels across all the digital platforms or wherever you guys download or stream music. And check them out at uh, theheelsmusic.com. Uh, Kyla, Bobby, Brittany, I sure appreciate the time today. And uh, just, again, Happy New Year. Best of luck going forward. And uh, I hope our paths cross in Texas or in Nashville one day, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we for sure. sure. We will look you up. We'll track uh, you down. We'll yeah, track you for some down. margaritas. Yes, yeah, so we got to <laughs> now. Got to put that on my list for uh, the radio seminar. I really appreciate y'all's time today. Thanks for being with me, and you, uh, it's a smash of a single. Continue good luck going forward. No doubt. Thank you so much. Thank you. you. Got it. Three of the best out there. The heels across all the digital platforms. Don't forget uh, March 13 to 15. Country radio seminar will be there broadcasting live from the Omni. Uh, great, great schedule already put together with great artists McBride and the Ride, Buddy Jewel. Uh, and a whole lot more. I'm sure Shannon Doe is going to stop by. We're in the works for so much out there. J.D. Shelburne and uh, some of the best and brightest artists in Nashville, Tennessee, presented by Bangtail Whiskey, our friends at Gentle Bend Spirits, and, of course, out there with Honky Tonk Texas. And we'll see you guys Monday. Great artist Casey Moon is going to join us on the show there. Also an aspiring artist in Nashville. We'll talk to her. And, of course, over the next few weeks, looks like Texas country artist Aaron Watson is going to come by here. The next few weeks, we'll talk about songwriting and some of the new projects that Aaron has out in his camp right now too as the tours are back up and going if you love your favorite artist i would suggest checking their website right now because everybody is full when it comes to live shows and music out there too so make sure you guys uh, do that and we do this for the love of music and for the love of artists we'll see you guys monday about 4 30 here on the backstage pass presented by bangtail whiskey gentle bend spirits 
and her friends at Honky Tonk Texas. Talk to you soon. Out there, and as always, say enjoy the weekend, drink responsibly, and if you're going to do something, make sure it is safe out there too. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, take care. Have a great night.